the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hiya, Casey. Hiya, the bird. How's the weather outside? Ah, it's still bad. Seems like this winter will never end. Yeah, but like I always say, a long winter means an early summer. Is that what you always say? Yeah, that's what I always say. Tony, what do you always say? Casey, I always say, Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, Witchcraft. <laughs> On the outskirts of our city, there's a queer rural community known as Frogtown, whose inhabitants resolutely combat the invasion of modern ideas and metropolitan customs. It's a section of small farms dotted here and there with a cluster of tiny houses. At about three o'clock on a cold winter morning, little groups of shivering natives peer curiously at a smoke-blackened shack that has just been the scene of a fire, and at the city policemen who are milling around it. Then a car with a press sign on its windshield pulls up at the curb, and a familiar voice... Hi, Sergeant Flanagan. What? Oh, so you're here, Casey. Sure, and before any other newspaper mugs from the looks of things, at least I don't see any competitors around here. Ah, uh, you're the first of your troublemaking tribe to get here. <laughs> yeah. I got a report that firemen uncovered a murder inside that shack after they got the flames under control. How about that? Oh, that's correct, Casey. Huh? They found the old guy who lived there dead in his bed. He'd been stabbed through the heart. Then the killer set fire to the place as an attempted cover-up. Any dope on the killer? You'll have to ask Captain Logan about that. He's inside the shack now. Well, I'll ask him after I shoot a couple of pictures of the place from out here. Are these uh, people hanging around our neighbors, the dead guy, I suppose, huh? Yes, we've been questioning them, but nobody knows anything about the murder, they say. Oh, that's a great help. Hey, don't move away from the house, you people. I want you in the picture, if you don't... Oh, no, no, oh. no. Well, hey, well... What do you know? They've all done a fade-out. Uh, you've covered news in Frogtown before, Casey. Didn't you find out the folks out here are kind of peculiar? They just don't want their pictures taken. Huh. Oh, well, nuts. I'll shoot the house with just you cops around it. Where's your uh, sidekick, Miss Williams? Uh, she was out on another job when City Desk gave me a hurry up on this one. Uh, Sarge, move over there. I'll put you in the foreground of my next shot. Oh, fine. Oh, I never say no to those pictures, Casey. The wife thinks my left profile is prettiest, uh, so take me this way. Okay, Robert Taylor. <laughs> Hold it now. Got it. All right, now I'll see what Logan has to offer. There he's coming out now, Casey. Yeah, with some old dame. I'll go back to your home, Mrs. Greco, and stay there. I'll want to talk to you again later on. Nothing more I can say, Captain. I'll tell you everything I know. You may think of something more later. Good night. Good night, Captain. I'm an honest woman. When I say I've told all, I have told all. Hmm. Uh-oh. I might have known you'd be showing up here, Casey. Hi, pal. Who's the old dame he just sent home? Her uh, name's Mrs. Mary Greco. She's a widow, lives in the shack to the north of this one. Her face is kind of familiar, but I can't... Now, you've probably seen her in police court. She's arraigned every so often on swindle charges growing oh, out yeah, of fortune-telling. Yeah, yeah. Old Gypsy Mary, they call uh, Come on in, Casey. Yeah. Gypsy Mary, just a petty swindler who takes in the nickel and dime class. Mm. And she seems to be altogether clean in the murder of this guy, Jenkins. Oh, Jenkins is the dead guy's name. Yeah, Amos Jenkins. Came here from some backwoods section of the Ozark Mountains about 15 years ago. Kept pretty much to himself and was suspected of being a conjure man. A what? A conjure man? That means a male witch, pal. A wizard. He was suspected of being... Are you kidding? Talk to some of the people in this neighborhood and you'll find they're not kidding when they talk about witches and wizards. They go for beliefs that belong back in the Dark Ages. Yeah, now I remember that a lot of farms out here have magic charms painted on the barns and yeah. houses to... Uh, Protect them from the evil well, eye. You'll see some anti-hex symbols right here in this room if you look around. The fire set by the killer didn't touch him, but they didn't protect the guy who put him up. Any idea who killed this conjure man, Jenkins, or why he was killed? Uh, not, not yet, but uh, Mrs. Greco and the 
a few other neighbors, I've learned that Jenkins chased a prowler out of here two nights ago. Yeah? According to Mrs. Greco, who tells the straightest story, she was awakened around 11.30, night before last, by a call from Jenkins. She got to her window in time to see a guy streak out of the back door with Jenkins after him. Did Jenkins tell him anything about what had happened? Only that he woke up suddenly to find the guy standing beside the bed with a knife in his hand. And the guy just beat it. She says Jenkins didn't know or wouldn't say who he was. But Jenkins is dead now, so we can't question him. Yeah, I can see that. But you think he came back with that same knife tonight and stuck it in Jenkins' heart? No, Jenkins wasn't stabbed with a knife tonight. He got it with a pair of scissors. What? Scissors? Yep. Body's still in the bedroom as we found it. Uh, come on in and have a look. Ah, okay. That fire didn't leave much untouched in this room, did it? Yeah, that body's badly charred. All except the head and the hair. Hey, take a look at that hair, Casey. The old guy wore it plenty long. He must have been allergic to barbers. Notice anything funny about his hair? No. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, a hunk of it's been cut off. Close to the scalp. Yeah, with a pair of scissors. Uh, and scissors were used to... Uh-huh. I told you some things here looked like possible leads. This one give you any idea? No. Uh, you're completely dumb on it, pal, I'm afraid. There seems to be a connection. There yeah, must be one. You got anything else, Logan? Yeah. Something even screwier than that clipped-off hunk of hair. Here, have a look. Holy smoke. A human hand. Cut off at the wrist. It's not what a Jenkins. No, the doc says it's completely mummified and it's been that way a long time. Where'd you find it? Under Jenkins' bed. Yeah. Huh. Must have something to do with the old guy's conjure stuff. It's probably a charm of some kind. You ask any of his neighbors about it? No, nor about the missing lock of hair. I'm keeping these two goofy items undercover for a while, and uh, I'd like you to, too. Okay, they're off the record until you say otherwise. You know, Logan, I'd say the smart thing for you to do is to study up on witchcraft. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I think I will, too. Murder's gotten interesting. <laughs> All you have to do is shoot pictures around it. I have to solve Ah, which reminds me... Yeah. Hey, I didn't say you could take pictures of that dead guy. Well, he's the only Frogtown resident who hasn't beat it when I aimed a camera tonight. You can't begrudge me one subject who doesn't run off. Williams, good afternoon. Good? Is Casey here? I don't see him. Well, I don't either. He ain't been in this bar all day. Oh, that settles it. This makes the third time in two hours he stood me up. If he really shows up sometime today, tell him I've gone and left no word. Uh, Miss Williams, wait. What for? Well, Casey don't break dates with you unless he's got big reasons. Ain't he told you what's keeping him? Oh, yes. Yes, he's got a wonderful excuse. He and Captain Logan are studying hex, black magic, Blood. Magic? Mm-hmm. And, and it's supposed to have something to do with that murder in Frogtown early this morning. Oh, I read about that, but the papers didn't mention nothing about magic. Well, Captain Logan is suppressing a lot of inside stuff on the case. Even I don't know what it is, because I haven't seen Casey, and I'm not going to wait any longer. I'm going. Hi, Annie. Hello, Ethelbert. Oh. Awful sorry to keep you waiting, kid. I just couldn't break away, though. That professor on witchcraft is the most interesting gal I've ever met. Gal? Yeah. Oh, boy, does she know her stuff, Annie. Annie, listen. There was a murder in York, Pennsylvania, 20 years ago that may be a ringer for this Jenkins killing. It seems that a conjure man, as the Pennsylvania Dutch call him, named Nelson Raymeyer, was killed by a guy named Blimer, and a lock of hair figured in that case, too. Her hair is blonde, of uh, course. Uh, whose hair, huh? You're a fascinating professor. Annie, she's a little old lady. Yeah? Yeah. Seventy, if she's a day. <laughs> yeah, and I'm talking about the lock of hair that was clipped from Jenkins. Well, I don't know anything about that. Well, I'll give you all the dope as we drive out to Frogtown. We're driving to Frogtown? Yep, right away. Have you had anything at the bar that you owe Ethelbert for? No, I just got here before you okay, came in. Okay, then let's go. Uh, just a minute. Uh, since you brung the subject up, Casey, you've been accumulating a little... Uh, uh, yeah. ...for two weeks. You, uh... <clears throat> 
We should pay, huh? Well, pal, I ain't supposed to put anything on the cuff. I got to take it out of my own pocket Wait, when I, I do, I and I'm I short know. right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Well, what do I owe you, pal? Uh, 1840. I hate to ask, and if you can't spare uh, it... Uh, my man, this $50 bill is for you. Keep it all and credit me with a difference. Yeah, that... He's give me 50 bucks, Miss Williams. Well, everybody has more. Mm -hmm. A neat little roll of 300 smackers, kiddies, minus the 50 I just handed over. Where'd you get all that money? Don't tell me one of them long shots you play finally won a race. Exactly. That's precisely what happened, Ethelbert, on a hunch that came out of the Jenkins murder. I stuck five bucks on the nose of an egg called Hexmaster, and he paid off 60 to one. Well, did you? <laughs> Casey, you've never won on the horses. Mm. Well, I'm playing my Hexmaster hunch still further, Annie. And to win by a length. Come on. We're driving to Frogtown. Perhaps once in a decade, a new material is perfected which changes our standards of value. Such a material is jadeite. Spelled J-A-D-E-I-T-E. Jadeite. It makes possible dinnerware unlike anything you've known. Jadeite is really beautiful. It has the lovely texture and color of rare Chinese porcelain. And jadeite is unbelievably strong. Why, it stands up under rough handling without chipping or cracking and is so heat-proof you can safely put it in a hot oven. Yet, jadeite actually costs less than the most ordinary dinnerware. For instance, a big jadeite platter costs only 25 cents in open stock. And a 35-piece dinner service for six is priced at less than $5 at your favorite chain store, department store, hardware store, or other store selling chinaware and glass. A set of jadeite is a perfect gift, and it makes it easy to replenish your own supply of dinnerware. Jadeite is the newest triumph of anchor hawking. The most famous name in glass. There you are. I've given you a complete picture of what Logan found after the murder and of what the professor told us today. Well, it seems incredible that people in this country still believe in witchcraft, that they still practice it. And they still kill people because of it. Mm. Yeah. What are we going to do in Frogtown? Something that Logan or his cops can't do quite as well as we can, Annie. That is, without risking a yell of frame-up and coercion. We're going to frame and coerce somebody? Mm, those are hard words, Annie. We're going to throw a bluff that may lead to a killer. Oh, well, tell me more. All right. Now, Logan and I believe that Gypsy Mary, this Mrs. Greco, recognized the guy that Jenkins chased out of his house two nights before the murder. Well, she's keeping Mum because she's afraid? Yeah. Now, look, Annie, she doesn't know you. Hmm. So while I watch outside her window in the dark with a camera, you have your fortune told and pass her a marked bill, see? And I'll get a picture of it, and maybe we can bluff her into thinking that we can cause her trouble unless she talks. Why, it's blackmail, Casey. Well, a man is dead, Annie. As murderer is free. Besides, we're only pulling a bluff, kid. Okay? Okay. A very interesting hand, young woman. Very interesting hand. You can uh, read my future in it, Mrs. Greco? <laughs> I can read many things. <laughs> And not only in your hand. Well, t tell my fortune. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. How much do you charge? Oh, the little lady wants to pay me. Well, of course. <laughs> no, 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 my dear. Put that money back into your purse. Old Mary will give you what she sees for nothing. <laughs> for nothing? Uh hmm. <laughs> to begin with, my dear, there is a young man in your life who will be more comfortable... If he comes into my warm house instead of standing in the cold outside my window. <laughs> oh, I, I've come inside, Mr. Casey, with your camera. Uh, thanks. <laughs> You'll find the door unlatched. Just push it open. There's lots of cold coming in the open window. I close it again. Well, young woman, uh, how do you like the things Mary Grico sees? <laughs> you answer that one, Casey. All right, I will. I'll answer by talking straight. Mrs. Greco, I think you can tell us the name of the prowler that old man Jenkins found in his house. Yes? Yes. And? 
So? We want to know who he is. I tell the cops I do not know. We're not cops. I know who you are. You work for big, rich newspaper that has much money to spend. Uh, well, I can't read hands, but I can read minds sometimes. How much? How much you pay? Well, our city editor would have to answer that. Uh, if you want to buy from me, I sell now. I do not sell later or to anybody else. Well, look, I haven't any dough. Well, then go away. Now, Get wait a out, minute. Then. Wait a minute. I know, wait. It is Casey, now or you never. have $250. Yes. Oh, $250. Well, that, that belongs to me. It's not the papers, bright girl. Give me $250 I'll and give I it tell. Casey, it's worth it. Well, maybe the paper won't give it back to me. Of course it will. For a murder exclusive? Give me or get out. Okay, okay, all right. Stick with me, Hexmaster. Don't let me lose this roll you won me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There is just uh, 250 here. All right, now give me the dope you promised. I give, and the true dope. I, I not only see the man Amos Jenkins chase from his house that night, but my good friend Jenkins tells me who he is. All right, tell us. The man you want has a little farm. On Barry Road. His name is Elisha Kraft. Elisha Kraft, Barry Road. That's right. You'll have no trouble finding him. <laughs> but you will not find that he killed Amos Jenkins. What? What do you mean? <laughs> Go and see Elisha Kraft. Get acquainted with him. <laughs> Your money has bought truth from me, Mr. Casey. $250 worth of truth. <laughs> But it has bought no murderer. <laughs> uh, you are Elisha Kraft? Yes, sir. I just told you I was. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. What you and this lady want to see me about? Well, uh, we're on the Morning Express, Mr. Kraft, covering the murder of Amos Jenkins. Amos Jenkins? Now, Mr. Kraft, a witness has positively identified you as the man Jenkins discovered in his house three nights ago. Mister, I admit I was in Jenkins' house that night, and I ain't sure how I got there. What? I'm a sick man. Sometimes I get spells, and I don't know where I am or what I'm doing. I didn't know I was in Jenkins' house until he hit me then. Then I come out of my spell and ran. You had a knife in your hand. How do you explain that? I tell you, I don't remember. Besides, I ain't got strange enough to choke a kitten. I, I can't even do the littlest work around my farm anymore. I got to hire fellas to do it for me. I'm sick, mister. I'm worse than sick. I'm dying. Casey. I'm sorry, Mr. Kraft. I had to do this. I wasn't in Jenkins' house last night anyway. I can prove it by my two hired men and Dr. Hoffman. I had one of my spells last night, a bad spell. Dr. Hoffman come at midnight, and him and the hired men set me, they set with me to three in the morning. Dr. Hoffman, you say? Uh, Dr. Gustav Hoffman. Anyone will tell you where to find him, and anyone will tell you his word is better than gold. Uh, how long have you been sick like this? Going on a year now. It, it hit me sharp and sudden. Well, we hope you recover your health as suddenly as you lost it. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I, I hope for the best myself. Yes. Oh, uh, let's go, Casey. Uh, just a moment, Annie. Uh, before we leave, Mr. Kraft, I'd like to take a picture of you. Picture? Yeah, for the paper. No. Huh? Why not? Don't believe in pictures. Don't like pictures. I know my rights. Nobody can take pictures of me when I say no. I gotta rest now. I'm a sick man. Yeah. All right, we'll go. Thanks for everything. You're welcome. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Kraft. Hmm. Casey, even if his alibi proved phony, I couldn't believe that that poor wasted midget of a man drove a pair of scissors through Jenkins' chest. Neither could I, Annie. I don't think his alibi will prove phony either. Well, we'll check it, of course. Come on, get in the car, kid. Okay. I'm sorry, Casey. Sorry for what? The two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh. I made you give it to that old woman. The paper's tough when it comes to money. You don't think it'll allow me the dough I spent because we're not bringing in 250 bucks worth? Eh? All we'll get for your money is a, a razzing. Mm, I'm not so sure Gypsy Mary swindled us, Annie. Well, now, how can you say that? Annie, After... before I start the car, take a good look at Kraft's house and his barn and chicken houses. Well, I'm looking. All right, what do you see? Well, a group of very well-cared-for buildings. Annie, listen. If you had a barn, for instance, would you have a fake window painted on each side... Has fake windows. Just painted on the board. Yeah, they're to the fool witches. To fool witches? Yeah. According to some popular hex ideas, the witch will be sap enough to try to get in the barn through those windows. 
Instead of going to the door. Casey. Yeah. There are painted wheels on some of the buildings, too. There's a witch catchers. Our friend Elisha Kraft had hoodoo chasers hung all over him. You mean he's... He's a believer in witchery? Yeah. And like Jenkins' neighbors this morning, he's afraid of being photographed, too. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, well, I'm going to get pictures of that guy when he doesn't know there's a camera around any. And then I'm going to make him tell me who he paid to kill Amos Jenkins. <laughs> Sit down, mister. You too, lady. Thanks, Mr. Kraft. What you two come to see me about this time? Well, we figured we owed you an apology for our first visit three days ago, for the suspicions we had of your enemy. Oh, that's all right. We saw Dr. Hoffman. He verified your alibi. Uh, his words better, I'll scold. Everybody we've talked to says that. He's not your uh, regular doctor, Mr. Kraft. Uh, uh... Regular doctor? Yeah, you told us you've been sick about a year. Dr. Hoffman says you've only consulted him a few times during the past month. Uh, yes, uh, that's right. Who's been treating you the rest of the time? Why, uh, I, I've been taking care of myself. Have you, sir? Well, that was dangerous, Mr. Kraft. Dr. Hoffman told you you require hospital care. Uh, he don't know everything. I'm getting better without no hospital. Uh, have you felt better since, uh, since Amos Jenkins died? What do you mean? Those sudden stabbing pains in the chest you've been having for nearly a year. Have they stopped during the past four days? I got... They haven't stopped, and they're not going to stop unless I stop them, eh? You? Here's the reason why. My picture? You've got a picture of me? Yes, and I know powwow magic, and I know conjure magic. I am a hex master. Yes, pinholes through my picture, pinholes in the chest where I get them stabbing pains. No, you... Go ahead, tear the picture up. Tear them all up. I got other pictures of you, lots of others. Uh... And you and your body and your mind, your living image is trapped in every one of them by my magic. When I stick a pin through your image, you feel it in your chest. You'll kill me. You'll finish the hex that Jenkins started. Yes, unless you tell me how Jenkins was killed and tell me the truth. I'm a witch doctor. I'll know when you're lying. Talk. If I do, you lift the hex. You let me lift? I'll lift the hex. All right, I'll talk. When I first got the pains, I didn't pay no attention. Then it got worse, and I went to see Lut Albrecht. Yeah, he's a conjure man, a power doctor. Yeah, yeah he charmed me and gave me magic pills to swallow, but that didn't do no good. Finally, he said someone had put a hex on me. Finally, after you'd paid him much more dough, he told you Amos Jenkins had laid the hex, huh? Yes, the only way to stop it was to put a bigger hex on Jenkins than he put on me. You know, conjure mister, you know we had to get a lock of Jenkins' hair to fix him good. Yes, I know, with a lock of his hair, which was part of his body, part of him, this Albrecht could work big magic. That's right. Well, I went to Jenkins' house at night when he was asleep. I had a knife to cut off a lock of his hair, but... Yeah, but he woke up and chased you. Yes. Then Albrecht went to get You him. don't know everything, Mr. Look, Casey. Look, Albrecht. I come in your house by the back collage. I've been listening. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Albrecht. Even with that shotgun in your hands. I'm going to do more than just hold this shotgun, mister. I've been thinking Elisha might talk to someone more than was good for him. I've been watching him close. He won't talk to nobody else. And you people won't tell what he's already said. Ludwig, you I'm won't... going to kill the three of you. No, no, Ludwig. You're not much of a conjure man, Albrecht. If you have to use a gun to shut us up, why not try a little magic? If you was the conjure man I heard you claim to be, mister, you would stop me from using the gun. But you can't stop me. I'm shooting now. <laughs> Good shot, Logan. Beautiful magic. Yeah. I hope I didn't kill him. Uh, you didn't. You only plugged him through the shoulder. And only just in time. You you and them other policemen was watching outside the window? And listening, Mr. Kraft. You've been under constant observation since an hour after Casey and Miss Williams first talked to you. Hey, Sergeant, get a doctor for this guy. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to take some exclusive pictures that are going to get me back 250 bucks. <laughs> Dear old Hexmaster, he paid off all the way. <laughs> We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. You know, American children are the healthiest children in the world, largely because most American babies now get a good, sound start in life. Much of the credit for this is due to our American food packers who produce convenient, scientifically prepared baby foods. The young mother can now give her baby well-balanced, nourishing meals without spending endless extra hours in the kitchen. In selecting prepared baby foods for your baby, whether fruits, vegetables, soups, or meats, it's wise to insist on two things. 
One, a brand name with which you're familiar. And two, a glass jar. Sterile, crystal clear anchor glass jars can't possibly affect purity or flavor. And because you heat and serve foods in the same glass jars in which you buy them and then reseal the jars to store leftovers, mothers save precious hours each week. Most of the better brands of prepared baby foods are packed in clean, sanitary anchor glass jars and sealed under vacuum with easy-to-open, easy-to-reseal anchor caps. Both products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Uh, powwow doctor Albrecht uh, has confessed to the cops, huh, Casey? Mm-hmm. To quote the language of the classics, Ethelbert, he has told all. As a matter of fact, Kraft had already paid Albrecht several grand for his magic help. There's Doan being a witch doctor. He said it. Well, Jenkins woke up when Albrecht snipped off a hunk of his hair and Albrecht let him have it with his scissors. Mm. And then he set fire to the place and made his getaway, and, oh, that's all. Well, not all, Annie. There's that, that mummified hand. Oh, and definitely. Mm. How did that thing get under the bed? Well, Albrecht had brought it with him. It's supposed to be the hand of an executed criminal. And it's supposed to be a powerful magic charm. A charm for what? Well, I'll tell you, Ethelbert, if you want to go into a house and steal something, a lock of hair, for instance. It prevents people in the house from waking up and catching you at it. Yeah, but it didn't work. No, not so good. Gee, in this age and day, such people. Yep, they're with us, pal. Say, did you get your 250 bucks back from the paper, Casey? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he got it. Oh, it's, well, hmm, it was. The pipe down, will you, Annie? What goes on? <laughs> Casey played a hunch too far, Ethelbert. Uh, well, okay, I'll tell it. I don't mind. You see, Hexmaster was running again, Ethelbert, and I stuck the whole roll on him, and I... Say, uh, Ethelbert, can I, can I have the change from that 50 bucks I gave you? <laughs> Casey, you just don't have any hex appeal. Huh? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is written by Alonzo Dean Cole. It is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Beats and is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. Original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Next week is Brotherhood Week, and let's make it work. Judge every man by his individual worth, not by some label. Don't spread any rumor against any race or religion, and don't listen to them either. Speak up against prejudice and four understand. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. Broadcasting <laughs> System.